Alrighty, how's everybody doing? My name is Stu, developer of the project Apsis Online, which is a sandbox, minimalist, roguelike MMORPG. What you're seeing here is the social network wrapper called AtSpace. And we'll jump right in. Um, I figured I'd do a kind of a redo video. The, pre the previous two videos, they changed you know, a lot between the two. Version one and two varied quite a bit. Everything from naming and uh, mechanics. So version three being another leap forward, I figured it'd be appropriate to go ahead and start from the beginning, which is making an account, right? So let's go ahead and log in, connect and link established, checking information, verify, match found, welcome back. Stand at the edge, shout, this is my voyage. Gaze deeply into the expanse below. Await a new breath within the speckled void. Begin again beneath the glittering ripples of the stars as an observer like so many before you. This is your voyage, your beginning. And you are alive. After nearly a decade at light speed, your ship has reached its destination. An Earth-like planet serving as a rendezvous for you and others seeking to escape the hell that home became. The onboard AI begins uploading the necessary information to your skin feed. An info sort reports low fuel and limited supplies, just as the hull shutters indicate that you've slipped into orbit. No one has ever gone this far before. It's time, and we wake up. It's one of my favorite things here. It was kind of a pain to code, but very fun to look at. And let's go ahead and report in. All right, so here we are. This is the graphics type for those unfamiliar with classic Rolex. In this room, we have the cryo chamber. If we step into it and hit enter, it asks us if we want to end the session, and we don't. This, well, this, this you can read all about in the Voyager's Handbook. I forgot what it's called, but it's kind of intense. This is a main computer in which you can go back to app space. We can also hit backspace and come back from app space. We could also hit F and go to the message board. In this corner is the weapons rack. Typically, there will be other people aboard your ship. In version three, in previous versions, this has been disabled due to lack of uh, essentially servers fast enough. But on that same note, I'd like to extend a special thanks to Opie at Vineyard House for providing me with a server, any server, right? to get this thing going and up and letting people play it. But uh, these are color coded by position, which includes pilots and engineers and ordnance officers and scouts and so on. You, in this case, me, I'm the captain. Uh, all right, so weapons here, we have damage, range, uh, and um, things of that nature. I'll go ahead and put a guide out at some point in regard to weapon stats. Um, hmm, do we need one? Nah. Let's go ahead and get right to the point. Now, the first thing we might want to do is go ahead and check the map. Right now, we're in the kitchen module. We're seeing the top left corner of the screen. But if you see, or we'll take a look at the three, or the box label three, that is the engine room. The fact that it's red, and there's a legend over on the left side of the screen as well. It says the module is offline, meaning the engines are offline. We might want to go ahead and repair those. The engines are damaged. There's a 20% chance you will repair them, and an 80% chance of a meltdown attempt to repair, because we like those odds, and it was successful. Of course, walking into the current engine room would fry our circuits. So what can we do and where are we? Well, we are above Bromius 2, which is an Earth-like planet and the very first planet players will be visiting in the game. I mentioned something about coins and I want to point out what I meant. Uh, you can find that information actually on the about page or rather on the help page of the at space screen. There was something about getting a going bold and getting coins and getting special perks from the visit machine, which only accepts these coins, these mysterious coins. Before I go ahead and go down to the planet and show 
some of the changes in this version. I do encourage you to go ahead and recap on the previous two videos if you want a few more details in regard to what the game is about, um, stats. I mean, the whole nine really, there's so much to cover because it's a pretty big scope of a game. And if we go ahead and try to depart, it says, are you sure? No pros have been deployed to this planet. That's fine. We like risky things, right? We came this far. Romeo's 2 is a temperate, habitable planet, which we will descend. So again, one of the biggest changes in this version has been the switch from allowing players to build private outposts that contribute to the planet's economy to a sandbox uh, oriented mechanic in which all players are free to contribute to the planet's terrain as a whole, whether that be building on the surface or digging and doing subterranean constructions or even going above land. They're all Z levels now. Z levels being another major addition to the game. And if we go ahead and settle and embark, here we are. Now, if you take a look at the top left corner, you see the vitals are flickering up and down and whatnot. I'm moving around. You can't tell because this planet uh, is, for now, pretty barren. I have not gotten around to writing a proper terrain generator. This will vary even now. Some planets will have some features, physical features, um, but it's something that is really not optimized and ready yet, although functional. As an administrator, I can build things at no cost right now. But even I will be restricted from doing so as we move into the next few versions, which won't I won't actually be incrementing directly. I think I'm gonna actually go ahead and do a 3.1, 3.2, and so on, because I want to go ahead and refine a lot of the sandbox features. If you also recall in the last videos, and if you haven't checked those out, definitely do. These the warp reactor, storage array, warp beacon, and mainframes, as well as the fiber cables, they all play a role with each other. But right now. Not so much. Still, the game does require a warp reactor to jump. And there it is. And if I try to go over it, if you look at the bottom of the screen there, where it says chat channel 1, which is disabled, uh, it says something is in your way as I try to move around it. These can still be connected via fiber to things like the mainframe, um, which in turn can be connected to storage arrays which in the event of a natural disaster of some sort uh, holds power um, you know that power that that is required for the reactor to function properly reactors are important because they play into the m drive the m drive you can read all about in the voyager handbook that you can download from hio what, this, what it essentially comes down to is you need a warp reactor for the ship to jump because they uh, tether to each other. So again, I, without getting too much of the jargon there, you could go ahead and check some of the details about that out um, in the handbook again. So I can go ahead and just walk away from this. And that is a way, way different scenario than we had originally set up. And when I say we, I mean you and me. I'll definitely be looking for a lot of feedback. Going forward, I oh, found it again. Um, PvP will be a thing, uh, unrestricted. Um, although doing so might get you on a bit of a shit list among other players, bounties will also be available. I also streamlined leaving the planet. In a previous versions, you had to actually go to your spaceship, which was parked in the middle of your outpost um, to, to leave, but I figured Hitting the D button, D key, was a little bit more efficient in that sense. So now we went ahead and built the reactor. We can go ahead and all systems are normal, it says. Oh, wow. Well, actually, interesting there. I wasn't supposed to show that, but let's let's go ahead and do it. Oh, I think we actually crashed it. Well, I think that'll be a good point to stop the video. Uh, but what I was going to show you was the stat screen. 
I'm currently affiliated with the United Earth Space Authority, and I was going to check out my ID card, which included stats like hardware, ordnance, um, piloting skills, and things of that nature. Class V for Voyager in the future, there will be opportunities to um, get different class licenses, uh, let you pilot different kinds of ships, customize your ship. Uh, you might even be able to take part in higher administrative duties on planets. There will be a complete framework for starting corporations with other players and generally collaborating. I wanted to emphasize social a lot in this game. So there will be a complete system allowing players to collaborate more easily. Uh, for, back of, for lack of a better example, I'm going to think EVE Online. Um, one of the issues I had in that game was how you could have a corporation, but you couldn't, say, go public in the game. You had to do that on the forum. Uh, you also couldn't directly sell stocks. You couldn't sell stocks, you know, as an item. So that's something else I would want to include in this game and so on and so forth. But again, without uh, we already hit the 11 minute mark. I'm going to wrap the video up. Um, this is version three. It should be available today. Special thanks to Opie at Vineyard for providing the server. If I didn't say that already, you can find me on Twitter at Dupe LaJoy, D-O-P-L-E-J-O-Y, and at Apps Online to follow the project itself, um, get updates on server uptime and things like that. Thanks for watching.